Shall we study uh, Bible together? Uh, last week we learned that uh, when the disciple asked Jesus, "Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven?" the Jesus replied, saying that uh, the the person who are like a child uh, who are going to the kingdom of heaven, they are the ones greatest. Uh, which means he meant that are uh, children of God. Uh, they are the ones uh, greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, basically at the end, uh, he was also indicating that, that the children of God is like a sheep and uh, God uh, himself is like a shepherd. So it is not the Father's will for the sheep to be lost. And that was the end of the uh, study that we, uh, we had last week. Now today, the, uh, Jesus continued to teach us uh, from the Matthew chapter 18, the verse 15, that he teaches us that how to regain the lost sheep. Uh, shall we read the Bible together? And um, we're going to read from Matthew chapter uh, 18, uh, verse 15. Uh, I'm going to read with N-E-T. Uh, shall we read Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault when the two of you are alone. If he listens to you, you have regained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others with you, so that at the test testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter must be established. Uh, here, the, uh, Jesus telling us that if there's a brother, uh, the another child of God, uh, they are, if the person is sinning, uh, we should go to the person directly in a private matter and then you know, uh, uh, ask him, uh, ask her that what happens. And then if the person repent, uh, that, uh, we regain the sheep, uh, that we, the sheep came back uh, to the father. So that is the basic we should do. But if the person should not, uh, if the person did not listen, and uh, then, then we should take two, 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 um, one or two more people for, as a witness, and then confirm the person's sin. And uh, well, why, why, did, why does she have to be confirmed? Because maybe the person who accusing of that person's sin, maybe he, he or she could be wrong too. But either way, uh, Bible clearly indicate that if they the sin at the church, uh, uh, we should uh, first we should go one by one uh, as a private matter. And then, if that didn't work, we should take two, three uh, of us, still somewhat private here, uh, that we will consult the person, and uh, hopefully that person will come back to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, to the father. Now, questions are, are we do that at the church? I know it's a very simple principle, we go to that person directly, but often, we don't do that at the church. Uh, often, if somebody, uh, we found somebody sinning at the church, we, 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 we think that person is doing something wrong, we usually go to somebody, some, some other people, uh, we start to say something like, we, we, say, we do like a gossiping. Uh, they make, make a rumor. Uh, <laughs> and then instead of going to the person direct, uh, we usually don't do that. We start to gossip. Um, now, that's very bad because uh, I, I remember uh, when I was very young, uh, I was around probably 18 or 19. Uh, I was, uh, at that time I was in Battle Creek, Michigan and uh, I went to church there and I just became Christian uh, at that time. And I was very young, I was around maybe 20, 19, something like that. Uh, just right after I graduated from high school. Uh, that time at that church, I, 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 I clearly remember there was another uh, boy, the, about same, same, age, same age as I was, uh, that, uh, you know, this, this boy was, the uh, rumor was that uh, he's a, people told me he's a womanizer. He, he, he go to the young girls at the church and uh, I guess ask the person to go date with him and he seems doing a lot. And so the rumor was that he's, to the point that people tell me he's actually a pervert or something like that, and I thought, oh, has so since he was about the same age as, age as I was, so I went to him directly and told him, hey, there's a gossip that I heard that you actually, uh, like, you are like a womanizer, that's what I heard. Now, when I say that, uh, I remember this young man, he got very upset. He's a, he, he was, uh, he's, a, he's a white boy, and uh, I remember his, his face became so pink, and his vein became... 
And he goes, oh. and then he starts telling me, who says such a things? And I, and I, then after that, he got so upset and uh, he was upset at the people, you know, gossiping about him. And he left the church. Uh, and he never came back to the church. I clearly remember that scene that he got very upset and become so red and he, because he was so mad. Uh, I, I, I mean, is that, is that good things? I mean, at the, you know, come to think of it now, for a young man to show some interest in the young girls at the church, it was, is that really sin? I, is it natural? I'm not, I'm not sure. It was really sin or not, even. Uh, but either way, that gossip actually chased this man out from the church, unfortunately. Uh, apparently, that's what we do. I, I think the one of the reason, uh, you know, we don't know each other at the church, no matter how long you call that person brother or sister at the church, uh, often we don't know that person because we don't really open our privacy. And as soon as we show the weakness, that we're so afraid that people start to gossip about that person and so we're so afraid to really show our privacy and uh, that's why often that um, you know we, we probably say hello how are you you know so and so and, you know, hi brother or hi, hi sister uh, but uh, we don't know each other that person don't know about me and uh, I don't know about that person uh, at the church and uh, no matter how many years uh, you only know the person with a name and a face but you really don't know about that person because uh, we're so afraid, uh, almost paralyzed to open our, our privacy and uh, because we gossip at the church and uh, because the gossip really killed the good relationship, the brothers and sisters. But that's what we do at the church. But the Bible telling us quite contrary to that. We first go to the, uh, d directly to the person and then the two others go directly. It's still a private matter. We should have a love and the compassion to the person. Uh, I remember the, another uh, example that uh, in the same church I experienced was there was a man uh, and I heard a rumor about this man that he's actually asking money. He's asking uh, uh, other br br uh, uh, Christians, brother and sister, and uh, he he asked amount like a hundred buck uh, to owe him. Uh, you know, let him borrow like hundred. Now, why the reason I remember I was only probably nineteen or twenty years old. The reason I remember was be because this man came to me and ask me if I can let him uh, uh, borrow that I can you know let him have a uh, hundred dollars and uh, you know for Christian brothers and sisters we love each other so we feel sorry for them man but then uh, this become a rumor and uh, at that time uh, I remember the church leader uh, apparently went to him directly and uh, what I find out was this man has uh, some mental issue and uh, he had, uh, uh, I'm talking about 19, probably 80, 1979, something like that. And at that time, I think lots of people had a really, I don't know why, but I feel lots, lots of uh, mental, uh, person with a mental issue was in the church. I, and some of them are very uh, uh, veteran, veterans at that time, I think was, but this man was mentally uh, a problem and he couldn't continue his work. Um, then I think there was a doctor at the church that uh, gave him some medication because some, something to do with the, uh, the, the brain or head, uh, the chemical imbalance caused him to not able to continue the work. That's what I heard later. So I think after he was diagnosed and gave the medicine, uh, he, was, uh, he was kind of stabilized and he was able to continue to work. And uh, otherwise, he couldn't really continue to work, so he always financially was in debt, I mean, issue, and so he had to, uh, the last person he could ask was the brother and sister at the church. But then, if, if the church leader didn't go to this man directly, uh, almost the church, entire church, could have been judged this man and uh, maybe chased him out. And uh, without love, the finding out this guy is actually very sick, uh, but then uh, nobody really knew about this. Everybody would say, be careful with this man. This man, we're going to borrow your money. And he's a very bad about his money uh, uh, things. Uh, we could have doing that. Uh, that's a very, I don't think that's a God wants that way. I think God wants us to be a, a loving place that the uh, church should be. You know, I, I mean, if you have a stomach issue, and we take a stomach medicine and go to work and uh, you know the brain is just another part of the body too uh, so sometimes we do need some medicine medication 
for somebody to be stabilized, I think it is. But then sometimes, quite often, uh, in case of brain, uh, if we met the somebody acting strange, we totally ignore. The point is, we have to go to the directly, the church have to go private, in a private manner. We should consult the person directly uh, about the issue. That they, if there is something that we uh, speculate that maybe something wrong at the church, we should go to the person directly. Uh, the church should be the place for love. I mean, the Bible clearly indicates that we should love each other. We call brother and sister. So, which means the church should be a family, and you know, there, 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 there's some family is very warm family, and some family is not so uh, a good family. Uh, the good church, I think, is a good family. Uh, good families always love each other, and they are very good, uh, loving uh, 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 atmosphere there. And uh, I think we, that's what we should we should with the love we should uh, uh, consult the brother and sister who are in uh, sin uh, directly to the person. And otherwise, we probably don't love each other, and we probably don't know each other. Then, after that, Jesus continued to telling us what we should do. Even we ask private, in a private matter about the consolidate about that person's sin, if that person didn't repent, what will happen after this? In the verse 17, Jesus telling us this. Let me read. If he refused to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refused to listen to the church, Treat him like a Gentile or a tax collector. I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will have, uh, will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you released on earth will have been released in heaven. Um, very surprising is uh, Jesus telling us that uh, first we should go to the person uh, directly by one by one. But then, then after that, if that didn't work, we go to two, three uh, witnesses to confirm uh, that. But then, if that didn't work, Jesus is telling us we should go to public now and go to tell the church and uh, let the church to, uh, kind of uh, decide. And if that person still not repent, <laughs> that we should let that person kind of treat the person like a Gentile, which means... <clears throat> At the church, we should ignore the person. It's almost like we should cast that person out from the church. Now, this is very contrary to what we just learned. Uh, in the first, Jesus said we should really love each other. We should take all this in a private matter. We should really directly to go to the person in the privacy. But then, if that didn't work, uh, we should make it this the public. And then, at the church, we should even kick that person out. Is that really right? But it, that's exactly what he said. But why that? Uh, I think it's very clear that at the church, we should not let the sin creep into the church. I think there's some point the church has to defend our faith. Uh, let me give you some example in, uh, uh, from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 1 and 2. Let me read that part. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. This is an example of the Corinthian church. Uh, the, what they did, the problem was, the first Corinthians chapter 5, f verse 1 and 2. It is actually reported that sexual immorality exists among you, the kind of immorality that is not permitted even among the Gentile, so that someone is cohabiting with his father's wife, and you are proud. Shouldn't you have been deeply sorrowful instead and remove the one who did this from among you? Wow, the surprising is that uh, Corinthian church, there was someone, uh, the sin, uh, uh, someone's really sinful, uh, have a sexual immorality. And uh, this church seems to uh, permit the person to stay in the church. But in the Paul challenged the Corinthian church saying that, uh, you know, shouldn't you guys uh, really kick these guys out? Uh, now, Paul also indicate the Bible clearly indicate the why that should be done in the verse six on the same chapter. Uh, let me read the First Corinthians chapter five, verse six. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know the little east affect the whole batch of dough? Uh, I think it's the point is this that uh, you know the east. Uh, we, we use a little bit of yeast uh, to make uh, bread. Uh, uh, if we put that in a, a, a dough, it becomes very big. Uh, I guess it's a little sin in a church. 
eventually going to affect whole entire church and that is uh, something that we should avoid I think that's why uh, if the person will not repent even that the third stage third step uh, that you know we have to make it to the public and at the church we should not let the sin creep into the church um, maybe I can give you some example uh, I remember that was exactly the same church in the Battle Creek Michigan uh, when I was high school uh, that church uh, I remember there was a well I, that church was a wonderful church by the way I'm not saying that but when I was a young man I remember there was another uh, Oriental man uh, came to that church and uh, since I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know uh, Oriental myself uh, I'm American uh, Asian Americans uh, that uh, I feel really close to him uh, he was not Japanese but he was uh, some other uh, uh, agents uh, American Asians and then the, this man said he's a Christian so uh, you know we all you know believed him and he's a nice Christian guy that's what we saw but then this guy's ask uh, all the children of the church, or actually kids, like teenagers of the church, including me, I was around 19 I think it was, and uh, he asked, not at the church, but he asked uh, 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 all of us to come to another location, and uh, he said that he's going to teach us about Bible. So we believed that this guy is a Christian, so we went to the another location, and then I thought this uh, uh, older, uh, Asian guy to, to teach us about his uh, Bible and that's what we thought and so the bunch of us from the church uh, around teenage uh, high school and uh, you know uh, the, uh, the junior high school kids went there and then this guy started teaching us like this that he starts I clearly remember he saying well the original sin Adam did was that Eve was actually uh, raped by the snake the snake is a symbol uh, the, the sexual symbol of the uh, man and Eve was sexually assault, assaulted by the uh, snake then, uh, when I heard this that's very strange because I thought the original sin is is not obeying the God's word that's what I thought was uh, but then that's this guy telling and later we find out this guy came from the something called unification church uh, uh, that uh, this guy's I'm talking about 1979 or 1980. Uh, back then, I think that particular uh, uh, sect was actually uh, expanding and even came to uh, uh, churches in the United States, especially targeting the young kid uh, at the church because young kids, uh, they heard about the Adam the Eve story, but uh, you know, they don't know deeply. So they tried to, I think, that, that, uh, uh, you know, convert them to their own uh, religions, I think. And I clearly remember, that at that time, uh, somebody probably told the church leader, and church leader seems consulted this man, and this man stopped coming for, to the, our church, I remember that. So uh, there's some point, church have to defend our faith, and the same way that we have to defend the church, we should not let the sin creep into our church. And for that sake, there's some point, the church have to let the God to take care of the issue instead of uh, uh, we try to uh, solve our own with our own strengths. We have to defend our church and our faith. Uh, probably that's what it meant. But then the, Jesus continued to say, in um, back to the Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse 19 and 20, Jesus continued to teach us this. And let me read the verse 19. Again, I tell the truth. If two of you on each, uh, uh, if two of you on earth uh, agree about whatever you ask my father in heaven will do it for you for whether uh, for where two or three are assembled in my name I am there among them Jesus basically telling us this that all this I'm talked about that when the, uh, the the brother or sister sins and how we dealt with at the church is all that we have to do that with uh, compassion and mostly we had to do that with a prayer uh, and he was saying as we pray that Jesus himself will be there and uh, really the church issue is not only the uh, 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 you know the people the church issue this is not really human issue anymore this is the God's issue and we really have to pray and let God handle this sin issue at the church and so Jesus encouraged us to pray, and we, we should pray for the uh, brothers and sisters, their sin, uh, because we never know that maybe 
uh, the person is sinning in uh, in uh, maybe maybe it's a process of uh, so something called sanctification. Uh, the, <laughs> you know, almost all the Christian probably experience this. That once, uh, some of them even twice or three times, uh, the we. Uh, we we often uh, you know like away from the church we 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 go back to the uh, uh, in the world and some people uh, even sin and uh, they, they 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 but they, but then God once the person uh, become a children of God God won't let the person go I mean God take care of it. usually what God does is God gave them uh, something called trial and uh, and uh, usually. Uh, the children of God who left the church and they usually going to have some hard time <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the trial they usually uh, become so broken hearted and uh, they usually come back to the church again and that's my experience that's my observation about the many many Christian people are like that maybe people who are watching my video and if you're a Christian for many years probably you're laughing probably because uh, you know, you probably seen that, or maybe yourself in that sanctification uh, process. We gradually, little by little, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's actually His work. The Holy Spirit actually make us uh, holier and holier, uh, little by little. And then on the way, that people have to uh, went through the trial and the suffering, but eventually come back to the Father with a broken heart. So at the church, we have to pray and uh, for that uh, in individual. Who are sinning, and then let God work on that person, and uh, even even the person, even the church have to uh, let the person out from the church. Uh, the person, the God will be really uh, uh, taking care of the person, and we should pray. Now, after this, this is about time that Peter asks a very strange question because Peter now questioning the Jesus that we're talking about the sin. Of the brothers and sisters, and how to regain the person from the lost sheep stage to the uh, Father God. But then the, uh, Peter asks, if the someone sin against himself uh, to him, what he should do? He sh how how many times he should forgive? Uh, let's continue to read in the Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse now, the 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? as many as seven times? Jesus said to him, No, seven times I tell you, but seventy-seven times. Now that's a big number. Uh, basically, uh, the time of Peter, uh, the Jewish uh, teacher was teaching them that we should forgive like three times. And so probably Peter get, uh, uh, asked uh, Jesus say, should we forgive seven times? Was for Peter's mind that was a uh, uh, more than enough. And uh, but Jesus replied quite differently, contrary to the Peter's belief that uh, seven times. But uh, Jesus said, you know, seventy-seven times. Uh, some translation goes seven times of seventy or something like that. But uh, either way, his point was we continue to forgive. Um, you know, we should forgive from uh, uh, beginning. And that's basically Jesus saying to us, uh, we, we just simply have to forgive every sin. Is that possible? I mean, but then uh, Jesus uh, gave us a parable, since it's so hard for us to forgive others, that Jesus gave us a parable after this. And uh, he gave us a parable uh, in uh, verse 23. Now let's read the, his parable to teach us this. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle account with his slaves. As he began settling his account, a man who owed 10,000 talents was brought to him. Because he was not able to repay it, the Lord ordered him to be sold along with his wife, children, and whatever he possesses, and repayment to be made. Now, uh, Jesus gave us a parable about the forgiveness. He was saying there is a king and there was a, a slave a servant or 10,000 talent. Now one talent uh, is uh, back then was uh, was a, actually is the biggest denomination that uh, 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 denominator the uh, money wise and then it was the biggest one and then it was a, one talent is about uh, 20 years of a wage. That is like uh, if if the average weighs about like a forty thousand a year, uh, the twenty years is like uh, 
uh, $80 million, uh, you know, I mean, $80 million, but he talked about 10,000 times over $80 million. Uh, do you know how much that would be <laughs> if my calculation is right? That's like almost, that's like $8 billion. I think the whole point of this parable is that this uh, 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 slave, a uh, young man, uh, I mean, this man uh, owed uh, something that he cannot repay. He's a humongous amount, the, uh, the debt that he has against this king, and uh, he cannot pay. And so the you know king asked him to sell everything, if even his wife and kids to uh, work to repay, but it's just impossible. And let's see how this parable goes in uh, uh, verse 26. Then the slave threw himself to the ground before him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will repay you everything. The Lord had compassion on that slave and released him and forgave him the debt. What amazing is this man have a tremendous debt, like a eight billion dollars that's impossible to pay back in his lifetime. And then this guy said, I, please you know, forgive me. And, uh, but then uh, the, this king shows compassion, feels sorry. He, has, he, he's, he feels sorry for this young uh, slave. And then he forgave all that. Then what happened after this? Uh, the verse 28. After he went out, the same slave found one of his fellow slaves who owed him 100 silver coins. So he grabbed him by the throat and started to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. Then his fellow slave threw himself down and begged him, Be patient with me. I will repay you. But, that, uh, but he refused. Instead, he went out and threw him in, in prison. Uh, until he repaid the debt. Uh, what happened was this uh, a slave who had been forgiven eight billion dollars uh, worth uh, debt was forgiven, uh, but then he found his uh, friend who uh, owed him uh, the hundred coins. Now one coin uh, that's probably like one denarius. That's like one day one day's wage. So the hundred uh, denarius is about uh, about like a ten thousand uh, dollars. That's still big money, but the ten thousand dollars is something. It's different. It's not big as eight billion dollars. And so I think the point is the problem is someone who been forgiven uh, a tremendous amount that someone that uh, couldn't even repay the person who that forgave the uh, little amount to the, uh, his brothers. And what, what happened after this? Uh, the verse 31. When his fellow slaves saw that uh, what had happened, they were very upset and went and told their Lord everything that had taken place. Then he, his Lord called the first slave and said to him, Evil slave, I forgive you all that debt because you begged me. Now what happened was that uh, you know eventually the uh, the king heard about this and the king got very upset too. So king told this first slave, uh, said, "Hey, you are bad. You are evil, actually, evil slave. You are a bad, evil slave, and uh, you should forgive that person." Now the uh, continuing the verse thirty three, it said like this: "Should you not?" have shown mercy to your fellow slave just as I showed it to you and in anger his Lord turned him over to the prison guard to torture him until he repaid all he owed so also my father uh, my heavenly father will do to you if each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart uh, basically I think that Jesus teaching us about this parable is very clear that we all got that so much that we cannot repay, but God forgave us. So we should forgive others, our brothers and sisters, we should forgive. Otherwise, God call us evil servant. I mean, if the Bible said you have to forgive, that means we have to forgive. If we don't forgive, that's a sin. I mean, uh, you know, the, what is the forgiveness, unforgiveness? Uh, that is almost like uh, that if someone offends you, the offender, 
that you let the offender keep offending you, you know, month after month, year after year, uh, the time you're not forgiving the person, that the person who offends you and uh, hurts you, uh, you let the persons uh, keep hurting you all the time that you're not forgiven. Now, that alone is very sad. Don't you get upset about that alone, the situation? You let, and actually, you actually let that person inside of you, yourself, is hurting you all the time. And, um, uh, you know, forgiveness is really, you have to forgive uh, the offender, and also you have to forgive yourself too. Uh, we have to forgive. Uh, that's clearly the Bible said. Now let me uh, um, the read from the Luke chapter 6, verse 26 and 27. Let me give you another example from the Bible. Uh, let me read Luke chapter 6. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. I think the Bible is very clear. We should not really judge others, and because the judging is actually God's work, it's not us to judge others. Uh, condemn is also we should not really condemn others because that's a God will do. And even the Bible telling us we should not even, uh, you know, uh, how I said like um, uh, try to re uh, repay. Uh, how I said like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we really should not uh, judge others and we should really forgive others. And all this is uh, because of the uh, judging others and uh, uh, we should, you know, uh, do all that is uh, God's work. Uh, God is the one going to judge others. God is, God is the one, uh, uh, you know, uh, give that person a hard time. Uh, we really shouldn't worry about how to uh, do all that. We should have to forgive, and uh, God is the one to do it. Now, I know some people are very hard to forgive others, and uh, what I do, I don't know if this will be a good uh, uh, you know, uh, example for you, but I, for my case, I look at the person, especially the person who uh, uh, do the uh, bad things, uh, I look at the person as a little kid. <laughs> because uh, you know, if the persons, uh, you know, every every one of us uh, had at one point in time we were a little little kid, like a, we, were, we used to be a three or four years old, um, and then somehow if the little kid, uh, the you know, did bad things, we can, we it's much easier for us to forgive. Whether someone's older than you or younger than you, uh, you know, somebody who is a very kind of, you know, bully, big, big guy, uh, doesn't matter. Um, that person at one point in time had, uh, used to be a very little child. And then I think that that's how God look at us. Uh, God probably look at all of us in the entire human, uh, entire people. That God probably look at us as a little children and uh, God remembers when I was a little kid. God, I think, really loves us, and that's that's how we should look others. And so, if I do that, uh, it usually much easier for me to forgive uh, others and then feel compassion. And then the point is, why this guy is acting like this, or this girl, uh, this woman acting like this? You know, I uh, I feel sorry for the person. You and that is, I think, uh, I think something much easier uh, to forgive others. Um, now, today's story is uh, uh, basically uh, started with uh, his disciple asked Jesus who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus' reply is that whoever act like a children, uh, the whoever became the children of God uh, went to the heaven and uh, become children of God and they are the greatest and also uh, it is not the God's will for the children of God to lost uh, from the uh, uh, like a, become a lost sheep and then today's lesson was how to regain the uh, lost sheep that if the, our brother and sister are committing the sin first we should go to pri privately with the love and compassion and we already forgive that person at the time we approach that person and then if that didn't work we should go to three others to confirm that a person's uh, sin and then if that didn't work uh, that we had to go to the public and go to the church and uh, to the point we let the God handle this person to the church we had to defend uh, our church and our faith 
and also we have to make sure that the uh, sin not creep into the church and to the church we should make it to the uh, uh, to the make sure the sin uh, out from the church and then the all this we have to do with the prayer with the compassion and love and the most of all that we have to forgive others um, and all things and only things we can forgive is through our prayer I think the church has to be a, a wonderful uh, the family uh, the, the church the where we see the uh, all the brothers and sisters we truly become the brother and sister uh, that we love each other and uh, we should be a good family and a loving family uh, let me end our today's message with uh, I'm gonna read from the Matthew cha uh, John chapter 13 verse 34 and 35 uh, let me read that to end today's message John chapter 13 uh, verse 34 and 35 I give you a new command to love uh, to love one another one another just as I loved you you also ought to love one another everyone will know by this that you are my disciple if you have loved for one another now Bible is I think very clear that this is a command from Jesus directly to us for us to love one, uh, one another and um, uh, the church it should be a wonderful loving relationship we should have is a loving family and God's family and that's when the uh, non Christians other people around the church we when we saw us that we became the uh, really a loving uh, entity that it become a, a, a the salt on the earth and the, uh, the, the, the light in the darkness because this is a good family that people really wanted to have a, a love relationship that uh, they like to join this uh, uh, loving family and that's a good uh, testimony and that is uh, something that God wants us to be and I think that's why the one of the evangelism is should be through that our loving forgiving uh, attitude others shall we pray Lord, thank you for today's message and thank you that you're teaching us your word today. And so us, so help us, uh, your servant, that, uh, so us to be able to love each other and forgive each other and how to deal with the sin in the church. Lord, thank you for today's message. It's really pray. Amen. Okay, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.